Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics. Welcome back. So today's lesson is actually a free sample from my How to Improve Your Figure Drawing course. This is lesson two of the course. It's the full lesson. So it'll allow you to really kind of try it out, see what you think about my teaching style. And if you've watched the channel here, then you probably already got a good idea of that. So this will give you the opportunity to let you know what this course is about. And there'll be links in the description box below to both Udemy and my Gumroad so that you can pick whatever platform you feel most comfortable with. And also keep in mind that you're getting a reduced rate by acting now, but it will be increasing each month until it reaches its full price. So I hope you enjoy this lesson, and I hope you'll check out the course. Let me know what you think, and I will talk to you soon. So in this next lesson, I'm going to show you how to break down arms. Uh, we'll just systematically go through parts of the body, but I think it's important to realize how you can individually separate certain components of the body and then reassemble them together. Uh, it's... I, it's the way that i found has helped me the most with uh, my figure drawing. So when doing the arm, um, I look for some basic shapes. Uh, this is one that I see for the shoulder. And for the bicep, I generally see something like this. So more of a football shape. The tricep, something like this, or from this particular angle anyways. And then for the forearm, I generally will see this muscle here and kind of a cylinder shape like this so on and so forth and then we would assemble the hand and we'll be getting into hands uh, later on in this course so essentially that's kind of how I place uh, some of the shapes now this takes a, a bit of practice to even probably get to that level where you're comfortable just throwing in those shapes so what I'll first do is show you uh, how I got to that or you know how I get to that comfort level. Uh, basically, if you're starting out, you might want to start more with uh, a circle, a line, another circle, another line, and another circle. And this represents the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist. Uh, something to keep in mind is that generally the wrist will line up to the shoulder, and then you'll add the hand on afterwards. So, you know, with starting the, this basic guide, you can give direction to your next part of your illustration. And then from here, you'll add cylinders. Like so. And like so. So, you know, you can see it's pretty crude. But it helps us to, you know, see a little bit further into what we're doing. So I'll set this one off to the side. I'll actually even copy this. And move this over. Okay, so uh, if I was to take this now and refine it a bit and look into the, uh, the arm illustration a bit more, uh, you can just soft erase that down or use a light table or whatever method you're working with. And then you can start to place these shapes that I illustrated over here. Uh, and, you know, obviously this is a different angle, um, or I don't know if you could tell, but it is a different angle than the one off to the right there. So basically we have to envision what those shapes will look like over here. And the part that you need to study, uh, you know, you learn how to draw this way, but then also you need to study the way that anatomy works and the way that muscles work. Muscles will always pull from one area of the drawing or arm, and they'll connect to other areas. And some parts will overlap and intersect, and some parts will go behind other parts. So that's where studying your anatomy will teach you that. Now the other thing that you need to be aware of is, say I'm just drawing the perimeter shape of the arm now. So I'm trying to give it some form. I'm not trying to draw into the anatomy too much, but I am placing some of the muscles as I go here. So let's say I get it to about there. And let's say I didn't draw in this uh, shape of the bicep yet. So I just have mainly the silhouette, which I, I think it's important to always study your silhouettes. I think it's another way to commit uh, a lot of this stuff to memory. So say I just did that and I didn't get into the musculature too much on the inside of the drawing yet. It's also important to study the thickness. So after you get the silhouette, also study the, the thickness of the overall shapes. So say we're to break them down like this, and you get this by studying the shadows off a photo. So 
So we'll say it goes something like this. So just with those simple lines that I added there, we're able to give a lot more of a dimensional look to that arm. And, you know, then you can start to perceive where maybe light uh, hits on this part of the arm as well and bounce light and all that fun stuff. But, you know, we, we won't get too much into that because uh, that's almost a whole nother series of videos and topics. But so by placing just some of these smaller shadow shapes like that, you can really start to get a, a more dimensional feel uh, to the arm. So I think it's important to do that. So you want to study the overall silhouette. And you want to study the way that uh, shadows react and, and give it depth. Uh, but that all starts with these basic crude shapes. So let me go ahead and take this, scale it down, move it over. Okay, so the other thing is just to log in a lot of different poses. So let's do the back of the arm. So we'll start again with the very basic uh, rudimentary building blocks. So let's say that this arm, what I'm perceiving, just so you know, even though I've only put down a circle, a line, a circle line, um, I'm actually perceiving that the already in my mind that it's going this way and that the arm is going back out and away from camera just a little bit. So I just want to illustrate that for you because it's, you know, you want to start envisioning that as early on as you can in the process. So now a larger circle for the shoulder. We'll do a cylinder up top the top of the arm. I'll even round the cylinder in the way that I would perceive it connecting to the shoulder. So I'm already starting to illustrate that visual guide for myself. And then here I want to perceive that it's going away from camera. I'll taper the cylinder just a bit. And I try to always make sure that the cylinder for the forearm is the equal distance from this base cylinder to the top of the shoulder. Again, I said uh, like I said before, if you were to raise this, it would actually meet the top of the shoulder, then you would add the hand on. So just keep in mind, I'll see a lot of illustrations, and it seems like the forearms are always too short. So let's make sure to add that enough. And also the, the common mistake as well is not to taper the wrist as far as it need be. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take this to the next stage. And let's add a little bit more. I'll even add a bit of a, a wedge shape for the hand, but we won't get into detail in the hand yet because I want to save that for another lesson. So we got the elbow back here. And let's go ahead and copy this. Right, we'll shrink it down first, move it over. Copy and paste. Move that back over. Okay, so now let's go ahead and give this a little bit more form. So in this next stage, we can start to figure out the shapes a little bit more. And over top of this, we'll do again that kind of oblong shape like this for the shoulder. Always make sure to make the shoulder a good size uh, larger in width and height than the rest of the arm. Uh, that's another thing I notice a lot is uh, People tend to draw the shoulders a bit small. Uh, so from back here, we're going to see the tricep. Now it'll be like this. Now the tricep will generally kind of come outward. Uh, if I was to draw it off to the side, it would almost be shaped like this, somewhat. And then it splits down the back, goes up. One side is up higher, uh, generally the inside portion, or not generally, that is the inside portion, uh, closest to the lat. So, you know, just kind of that shape there. We'll draw that in. So depending on how defined you're trying to make uh, a character look or muscular, uh, you could start off very light with this if you're not doing something as stylized or as, uh, as intense uh, as comic book illustration. Uh, the elbow, I like to just kind of keep with that circle. Uh, it's, it's got a bit of a, a downward point to it. And then it kind of tapers up. Uh, it's also a good point for where to draw the uh, the line that you see in the back of the arm that kind of meets down to the uh, back of the wrist. So I would actually need to tilt this hand a bit more. 
and the forearm generally is larger and wider at the, the top here and then tapers down pretty heavily and you get a bit of this muscle around the side there and the wrist right at the very end widens back out so it, you know it's it's just knowing this about anatomy and studying the way the muscles go and what direction they head um, you know and obviously this isn't a perfect sketch I don't know if there is a such thing uh, but you just keep doing it and doing it and you'll you'll get a better feel for you know what you like to see in your own drawings and uh, how much of a, a stylized representation you want versus realism and uh, you know the more time you put in the more realistic it's generally going to get so if you keep soft erasing this and you keep coming back with a uh, a new perspective and draw over top then generally uh, you're going to get closer and closer uh, now especially if you're studying from reference if you're just kind of eyeballing it uh, like I'm doing here then you you know you might tend to distort things and give it a, a more stylized look but that's what I'm after being uh, more into comic illustration so I'm okay with that uh, but you know there's no harm in studying uh, reference and recreating this stuff it's how you learn so you know like one of the tricky parts is right here how the the tricep comes down and around I think it meets somewhere around in here uh, you know and I don't want to draw this overly segmented as I'm already starting to do uh, but I do want to illustrate some of the parts of where the muscles head and the shoulder does this tricky kind of thing where they almost rotate up and back around so it comes down further in between the bicep and tricep and then it goes up and around kind of like this and meets the back and you know a good way to perceive all of this is that all of it's interconnected that everything you know uh, kind of segues into another thing you know muscle group to muscle group so so yeah so something like that and that would give us a you know kind of an overly straight down but a back view of an arm and I don't know that you would actually see as much of the bicep as I've drawn here I think the tricep would kind of get in the way more and you'd see less of this bicep Let's go ahead and select this and scale it down and put it next to our, our base uh, template there. Okay, so I want to show you one more before we conclude this lesson. And I want to show you basically another way of looking at it. So I've shown you how you can break down the shapes with a, a quick line uh, for a shadow here. And I've showed you how a couple representations of how you would work up from the basic form. Now the other thing I want to show you to get in the habit of is to break down the shapes even a step further. So let's go ahead and take another uh, arm position like this. So I'm just going to kind of skip talking about the beginning stages and you can just watch me rough this out or hopefully you're following along. And we'll get these basic shapes into place. But then what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and go right to... Um, designing this in, in more of a 3D type fashion. You know, we have to remember that we're creating 2D images on a 2D surface, but we're trying to envision uh, 3D. We're trying to make things look very dimensional, and, and we're basically cheating. You know, it's a bit of a, a tomfoolery, if you will. <laughs> I don't think I've ever used that term before. but um, So basically, you know, you're trying to really make it look like it's three dimension, uh, even though it's not. Now, one way to do that is to actually get in here and do as many three-dimensional lines as you can. So really draw these lines and per, you know pretend like you're looking at something in a 3D program. So oftentimes what I'll tell my students to study a little bit of 3D, even though you're working as an illustrator and you're trying to create things in a 2D space, I recommend that you study uh, 3D programs. And there's some uh, free ones out there that you can get into without uh, you know, dedicating your life savings to it. But you'll get in the habit of looking at three, you know, things like this in a 3D space, which is, uh, you know, I think helps your visualization process. So you go like this, you know, you kind of draw as much of it in a, a 3D kind of grid as you can. Uh, and then also you break certain parts down and you do your studies and you say, okay, this, this muscle right here, you know, looking at photos or whatever you got to do, how would it look in a 3D space? And you can shade and and uh, kind of visualize that better 
by segmenting these certain areas and breaking them down. So I guess you're just itemizing parts of the body and, and really focusing on it. And then, you know, studying this muscle here. How does this react? And how thick is it to the base? And how thin, how quickly does it taper off this way? Um, but I think these little lines that help you draw in 3D uh, space, let me soft erase this down again, and I'll illustrate that even further. I think it really helps you to see that and, and break that down. So I'll draw it again. Just kind of quickly here. I'll do a little bit of line weight just to further illustrate it. You see I'm almost making things look a little too angular in a few spots, but I'm doing that intentionally because I want to really uh, kind of you know, push that direction that I'm going for visually of uh, the depth of these segmented muscles. So something like that. And there's a few more muscle strands the way it goes around like this and you know again this isn't entirely about accuracy as much as I'm trying to explain the process in which I break things down and, and study. You know so the bicep and the way it connects to the shoulder uh, you're generally not going to have it this segmented um, unless you're a really big bodybuilder or something but uh, but for the sake of studies it's not a bad thing so we'll just kind of over illustrate that so we'll show the separation from the shoulder muscles like this again we'll show those those kind of three-dimensional lines 3d lines we'll even have them taper off to just this muscle group like this you know, I almost picture like we're drawing uh, Colossus from X-Men, because you always see these little lines on them. If you're familiar with, with who that even is, but maybe, maybe not. Uh, but by doing this, you know, you're we're really painting the picture that each one of these areas are segmented and that they're rounded. That they have uh, a bit of depth to them. So again, that's what this line here is for. This line to the back of the elbow. This line to the bottom part of the forearm. And you know you can shade these in if you want. And keep in mind all these art files will be supplied uh, with the course so they're available here for download so that you can follow along and study these. Probably already knew that but just in case you didn't. So just like that so and, and again you know each part so even though you don't want to get in the habit of over segmenting your your natural drawings your um, your typical figure drawings it's okay when you're studying because it, it kind of reinforces uh, these shapes in your mind uh, then you can go back and soften them up so you know I obviously don't recommend doing this if you're drawing a uh, you know a real life drawing or anything like that but uh, but for studying it's it's more than adequate so we'll go like this and again, just really trying to visually get the idea of the shape of these uh, these muscles or this arm. So I do this quite a bit for my studies. I, I just feel like it's um, it really helps me to understand it. And then from here, uh, just save these. You know, save them in your sketchbook, save them in your computer under uh, you know titles and things, so that you can access them and. Uh, that way if you do spend your time really uh, doing some intense studies you can pull from that reference. You can remember where you were at uh, as an illustrator and what things uh, were clicking mentally for you. Because uh, that happens at times. There's times you go back and you look at some of your old uh, work and you're like, man I was doing well with uh, drawing hands or feet there and then I, I somehow forgot that and I don't know why that occurs but it's just something that, that does happen. Uh, chances are what it probably is, is when you were doing well with it previously you were inspired because inspiration is a big part of drawing any of this stuff. So there you go that's how I'd break down and do some studies for uh, for some various arm poses. Alright so that'll conclude this lesson next we'll head over to studying the legs and breaking those down uh, with shapes as well. So let's continue on.